Hey guys, welcome back. Mr. Fixer here. So we got another X5 video. Uh, in this one, I'm going to be showing you how to replace, <clears throat> excuse me, replace the uh, strut mount and the bushings that give you the nasty clunking if you have one of these X5, the E70 uh, <clears throat> models. So what I'm talking about is this this bushing right up here and there's another one actually on top uh, that I'm going to show you uh, later on into the video when we start taking the whole assembly out but this is your strut mount so there is a urethane bushing here on the bottom and that's making pretty nasty clunking noise because they just kind of disintegrate over time and then there's also another one on the top you know, with a washer over it so we're going to be taking the whole strut assembly out and we're going to replace the mount and the bushings trying to fix this clunking noise so uh here is the new parts that i'm using this is the strut mount it's a pretty basic plate it's not like other vehicles there is no actual bearing or anything like that so it's just the aluminum plate with uh, a rubber and uh, that's about it and then these are the bushings that are using yeah, if i'm not mistaken this should be the top one and i think this is the bottom uh, right in here so you have the two bushings uh, and yeah let's go ahead and start diving into this thing so first things first uh, yeah you're gonna have to take this weather stripping off and then you have these um, little i don't know what to call it they're not bolts they look like it but it's these uh little clips actually I already turn them but they turn a uh, quarter of a turn so this is locked right now and then you turn it counterclockwise just like you loosen about a quarter of a turn so you don't need to use an actual um ratchet you can do it by hand and it's a 13 millimeter so that's what i did some people actually strip these because they use a ratchet when they're putting them back in and they tend to over tighten because they can't really feel it where where it actually locks but all it is is just a quarter of a turn and yeah and that's it and you can take it off by hand and so we're pulling this guy out like that and then we got to do the same thing to the other side so both of these covers will have to come off so then we can take this guy off because that is right over where the strut mount bolts are they're kind of hidden so you can see there's the there's one nut right there um, yeah we're gonna have to take all this off uh, let me do the other side real quick and then i'll show you what you need to remove the other covers they're actually torques but let me pull this off first all right so both covers are off and now on this side what you have to do is also remove the uh, cabin air filter uh, housing i guess or cover um, so to do that is also three of these little uh, boat looking clips that you just do quarter of a turn so there's one here and two right under the windshield wiper cowl so you just do quarter of a turn then you have to unplug the uh, exterior or ambient temperature uh, sensor right here so that just unclips like that with the nice little german connectors that, that likes to uh, break but uh yeah once you undo the sensor and these three bolts you just lift the box or the cover with the filter out of the way like so all right 
So there's your two filters, the cabin filters. Okay, so now that you have all this out of the way, you can get to the uh, torques. So these are T, what a T25, yeah, T25 torques. So there's two right here. There's one out here behind the engine cover. Okay, move out this way. So there's one right here, two down here. And there's also two 10 millimeter bolt that screw down into the uh, uh, what you call it, the strut mount housing or the frame of the the car. So there's two 10 millimeter bolts and three T25 torques. And there's usually supposed to be a little plastic clip here on the end. Mine are gone because they replaced all these uh panels right here so they probably just broke the clips and they never bothered to put them back which is no big deal it's not gonna hurt anything but uh yeah once you take this off then you can actually have access to the nut the the three nuts that hold the actual strut mount assembly so i'm gonna take uh this cover off and show you what i'm talking about all right, so here's the two 10 millimeter bolt that I told you and the three torques. They're already out of the way. And now you kind of just gently lift this guy out of the way. Like so, because you see how it goes under this other piece. And uh, you can remove this one if you're doing both sides at the same time. You're going to have to. Uh, but yeah, I'm just doing this one side. The other side is already done. So we're pulling it like that. And now you can see it. And all this is the, uh, what's left over from the strut mount bushing, the urethane bushing that I was telling that there should be one up here on top. Let me get a light actually. Um, so yeah. There's absolutely no bushing left. And this is pretty much the scene with all these uh, X5s. Every single one of them. These bushings, they just disintegrate. And yeah. And then this washer is just free to go up and down as your suspension is moving. And it's slapping right against the metal over here. And same thing is happening on the bottom. Uh, because there is a metal piece, if I'm not mistaken, on top of the uh, strut mount, I mean, on top of the strut boot. Uh, I think there's like a big metal washer or just a metal top piece. And that's also slapping around when the bottom bushing goes out. But yeah, now you got access to the three nuts that, that actually hold the strut mount assembly and the whole strut. So... We're gonna pop these off. I think these are 13 mils. Yeah, double check. Yeah, so 13 millimeter. There's three of them. One here, one here, and the other one is right there. So once you free those, then the assembly would actually drop down because that's holding your uh move this light. That's what's what's holding the strut mount and the strut is actually strut and spring assembly is bolted to the mount so the next thing actually that i like to do uh there's other ways of doing it you can take everything out but the easiest way i found and fastest for me is i just free up this upper control arm so these are 16 millimeter uh nut right here and the bolt so you take that out and you free up this uh, control arm from the knuckle and once you do that the whole knuckle with the rest of the suspension kind of drops down at that point actually I would free up the strut the bottom of the strut where it's bolted to this fork the mounting fork that's also bolted to the lower control arm I just unscrew it from up here so once I free up the suspension or free up the knuckle, I should say, then the whole thing would drop. So I'm leaving the 
strut mount still bolted to the frame of the car so i want the strut mount to stay in place uh, i mean this whole strut assembly i want it to stay in place but the rest of it to kind of drop down and as it does as it is doing that i want this fork to go down basically slide off of the strut so then all i have to do is come back on top undo the three 13 millimeter nuts and then the whole assembly strut assembly would just drop out of the vehicle and i can just fish it out and uh do what i have to do so i'm gonna show you right now what i'm doing uh first i'm gonna do the bolt i think this is an 18 millimeter that holds the fork to the bottom of the strut so i'm gonna be doing that one first yeah that's an 18 millimeter just one bolt right there and that should uh free up the fork from the strut uh it's good to spray some penetrant like wd-40 or whatever or pv blaster all around the bottom of the strut make it a little easier and on the bolt as well so that'll make it a little easier to disassemble i did the same thing up here so um let me go ahead and do that real quick and uh, see what happens. See if it's going to be, uh, if it's going to cooperate. Okay, so I already got the uh, bolt, the mounting bolt for the fork out right here. Uh, now I also hold this bracket for the wire for the uh, ABS sensor. So, uh, for good measure, I'm just going to go ahead and disconnect it because I don't want the suspension to drop way too much and pull this wire out and, and break the sensor or just pull the wires out of the sensor. So what you do is just pop this cover off and there's the connector. Have this little clip, see if I can do it with one hand and I can and there it is. So with the ABS sensor now disconnect it we can go ahead and free up this uh, upper control arm and in theory the suspension should actually drop so let's see uh, what happens all right so the bolt is out and let's see if this control arm is going to just drop down you can give it a, a light tap and have it you can I wouldn't suggest doing what I'm doing, tapping on the control arm. I'm just checking it. But yeah, if you tap on it over here, that should help it come down. Or you can grab a pretty good sized flathead screwdriver and kind of wedge it in there and tap it, trying to open this gap a little bit. So then it'll free it up a lot easier. So I think that's what I'm probably going to do. Uh, let me see if I got a uh, big enough screwdriver to go in there. Okay, so I got the screwdriver kind of wedged in there. I'm just going to tap lightly and see. Yeah, you can see it moving. You can see it coming out. Yeah, you, you get the idea what you need to do to free it up. <laughs> yeah, I almost busted my butt right there. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's going to make it on YouTube. Okay, so yeah, upper control arm is free now. And you can see the whole knuckle is just resting on the lower control arm and the axle. So mind that, that you don't want to pull the the axle apart so you're gonna have to grab some uh, bungee cord or something to try and secure this knuckle kind of over here on the side because you don't do not want it to come out and then it's gonna be a, a huge pain to trying to put this axle back together or if you even pull the boot out so that's definitely not what you want to do so just be careful and also the uh, brake line is still connected as well so you don't want to be creating extra uh, stress on that and, and pulling the brake line 
So I'm gonna go ahead and get a, a bungee cord or something and just secure the knuckle to the upper control arm somewhere over here. So that way I know I'm not gonna mess up my CV axle. I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick and then we move on to the next step trying to get the fork from the bottom of the uh, strut. All right, so now that I got my bungee cord in place, you can see I just got it connected to the upper control arm. It's basically just to hold the knuckle from coming out anymore and pulling the axle apart. So you can see the, the brake line is still free. There's no stress on, on the brake line or any other components. So it's just, like I said, just to secure it and keep it in a in a safe enough distance where it's not in your way but it's it's also uh yeah not damaging anything and you can see why we disconnected this because otherwise you can pull it the uh, connector right there for the abs sensor anyway uh moving on to the fork same thing you can use some big screwdriver or if you have like a little short pry bar or something you can stick in here uh like from the top and just you can lightly tap on it to to try and spread this uh so that way it'll slide a lot easier but you really don't have to a lot of time if you if your car is not rusted out like this should come down pretty easy especially if you spray some penetrant so i just hit it like right here on the tap but again don't use a lot of force because yeah this is you might break this or damage it if you hit it too hard you, you can damage the actual diameter right here and then you have uh, a really hard time putting the bolt through the hole so like i said just just get a feel for it and see if it's coming out like pretty easy but yeah you can see this one is is going down and i'm not doing any damage to the fork so um I'm going to go ahead and tap this thing out and then we'll go ahead and, and pull the assembly out. Okay guys, so I've got it to go down about halfway and then I kind of hit the limit I guess on the lower control arm. So uh, I was able to do it on the other side, I don't know why it doesn't want to go any lower on this side. There's, there's room between the fork and the axle for the, the fork to go down more but I'm just gonna go ahead and disconnect the fork from the bottom control arm and then uh, separate him that way so I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick oh and that bottom uh, bolt with the nut that holds the fork to the lower control arm that's actually 21 millimeter so I forgot to mention that all right guys so we got the lower control arm disconnected so the fork is unbolted from the lower control arm and now you should be able to basically turn the steering inward and then you should be able to work the fork out of the way and basically free it Okay, so there it is. Yep. Yeah, so now the strut is completely free. All that's holding it, the holding the whole the strut assembly, is the uh, three nuts on the bottom, the 13 mil nuts that hold the strut mount to the shock tower. So that's it. So let's get that taken care of. Uh, it's usually nice to have somebody underneath actually if i put my phone somewhere here that way i can work in with one hand and hold the strut assembly with my other hand so it don't just drop out from underneath the vehicle uh let me get my uh tools real quick so here we go and hold the strut assembly so all right 
So now I can just pull it and here we go. So we got it out. Now there's your whoops wait. So there's your strut assembly. And now we need of course the uh clamp to clamp down this spring so we can remove the strut mount put the new bushings in and reassemble everything so let me go and grab the uh spring compressors all right so i got the spring compressed yes i got some cheap old schwaben uh clamps but don't mind that i'm just cheap and these work so anyway the nut that holds the uh strut is 18 millimeter and then if uh, it doesn't start going with the impact and the whole thing is spinning you're gonna need to to hold the the strut right there you can put a uh, six millimeter yeah i think it's a six millimeter hex right there so just hold that in place with a uh, wrench and uh, yeah you just unbolt this and now that the washer is off and this is where that bushing is supposed to be which is not it's completely gone so there's absolutely no bushing and when that bushing is gone basically what happens with this washer is just washer is just slamming against the metal up here making all that nasty noise so yeah we're just gonna pull you can probably use a screwdriver to pull this strut mount out and there we go so here's the old strut mount yeah the the center of it is kind of torn yeah, lighting kind of sucks sorry about that but yeah there's a little bit a little bit of a bushing left on the top um so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and uh get the new ones but basically the same story is when this bushing is gone right here i'm trying to take it out in one piece but i don't think it's well yeah so there you go so yeah basically when this bushing disintegrates completely you got this metal piece that's part of the boot so that is starts slamming up against the uh the strut mount too so that's the other noise that is going to be making so i'm gonna grab the new bushing and start putting this thing back together uh so let me let me go ahead and do that okay guys so yeah here it is completed the strut mount assembly all back together with the new bushing on the bottom and there's the new one on top with the new strut mount uh actually on further inspection my original strut mount turns out it looked like it was okay let me see if i can get a better light it looked like if it, it was not that bad but it's actually completely tore see. right there so it's completely torn apart and split open so yeah my strut mount is was completely gone as well not just the bushing so uh yeah anyway Hope you guys enjoyed the video i'm not going to show you the installation because it's basically the reversal of the removal you guys know the procedure already so uh yeah hope you guys enjoyed the video again hit the like button for me if you did hit the subscribe and the notification bell if you like to see more videos from me and i'll be putting some more x5 suspension stuff soon and any other stuff with the mowers the cars whatever but uh yeah, thanks again. Thanks for all the support. Uh, appreciate all the viewers uh, and hoping to grow my channel. 
even more drop a comment down below let me know if you like the video if you didn't like it what am i doing wrong what am i doing right uh what else you'd like to see on the channel uh, and again i hope this was helpful to somebody out there to uh, go ahead and conquer this task on their own and fix their vehicle. Uh, and again, stay safe, be blessed. Catch you in the next video.